Hey, 4C Divers! Welcome to Facebook Live! Thank you all for tuning in. We're really excited about tonight's presentation. So let's do a check-in. Let's see who's listening. Where are we listening in from? You guys know the drill. Say hello to us in the comments section. You can let us know if you're listening here in South Florida, in the state of Florida, outside of Florida. Where are you guys listening in from? We want to know. Also, you can always give us a thumbs up, a smiley face, or a heart emoji to let us know that you're enjoying tonight's presentation. We'd love to get your guys' feedback. And if you guys have any questions about tonight's presents, uh, for the tonight's presenter, go ahead and comment in the comment section those questions, and we would love to answer those. So let's do a check-in again. It is November. Guys, Thanksgiving's right around the corner. And you know what that means? We always do our Give Thanks to Your Oceans Month here at 4C. And we always want to make sure that we're taking care of our oceans and the things that live inside of it. Because we as divers love to dive and see all these animals and creatures and the reef and everything that's in it. So we need to make sure that we're taking care of it. So we have all these guest presenters lined up. And tonight's guest presenter is going to be fantastic because they're doing lots of stuff, not just globally, but here locally. And we want to know more about what this organization's up to. All right. So uh, if you want to get in for tonight's raffle, you guys know the drill. You have until 645 to get on our website, www.force-e.com, and go to the event tab. When you go there, find the Four Oceans uh, Facebook Live. Click on that. Register. Put your name and your email. And we will get you in for this raffle. We're going to be raffling off. A Four Oceans bracelet. So, woohoo. All right. So, guys, thank you for tuning in. Again, if you don't know me, I'm Nicole. I'm your host. And let's get this party started. It is give thanks to our oceans. And better yet, let's talk to the people from Four Oceans. So, let's go ahead and bring in our guest presenter. He is actually delivering for us our new stock of four ocean products so here we go tony there's our delivery it's gonna be in the 4c stores as of tomorrow so let's check it out where's this box let's check it out what's there all right oh my gosh you guys we're super excited to be hosting these products at the 4c stores and tony's going to tell you a little bit more about them in his presentation Perfect. All right. Everyone's saying hi to Tony. Hello. <laughs> uh, Tony and I go back. We've worked in the dive industry um, for a while, and he worked with my husband. So he uh, came over to Four Oceans. And um, what do you do for them? So currently, I'm the fleet operations manager and business development for Four Ocean. Uh, so basically, in charge of the cleanup operations that we do here at South Florida. Okay. And let's go ahead and bring up your slides. And. All right, so we got the first slide here. And so Four Oceans, tell us a little bit about the organization. Sure, so Four Oceans started in 2017 and we've kind of evolved over that period of time. First and foremost, a lot of people um, believe that we are a nonprofit and uh, we've never you know, explain ourselves as a nonprofit. In fact, we've been pretty transparent with, with it, but I'll use this opportunity as a chance to kind of educate people on that. So, Four Oceans founded on the belief that business could be a force for good and that single actions of individual people collectively uh, have the power to change the world. So, um, in the recent year, we've become a certified B Corp. Uh, so, basically, that's audited from a third party that just looks at our business practices globally across the board and make sure that we're maintaining a uh, basically a premium experience for the crew and the team that's here um, and just the way that we do business in general there's certain criteria to meet but also we're a public benefit corporation so that means that we are a for-profit but being a public benefit corporation what that means is we can put the mission um, at the forefront as we would for profits as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to make dollars and cents for us to proceed. If it's mission oriented and it makes sense from um, a mission standpoint, we're able to carry it out even if the fiscal returns um, wouldn't necessarily be like a driving force on their own. So it's very important for people to know that we are a for-profit public benefit corporation 
um, just so that everybody's on the same page and, and nobody, um, you know, expects or thinks otherwise. Um, we have full-time captains and crews. They recover, you know, any kind of harmful marine debris that's already polluting the ocean. And then, of course, um, we're trying to stop plastic pollution at its source by educating people and spreading awareness about this global crisis. And we want to empower you all um, to end your dependence on single-use plastics. Um, so even small changes, when everybody's doing it, they have a very large impact. So if it's um, going to your favorite restaurant instead of getting takeout, um, you know, that one time per week, or changing the way you box up lunches for your children that are going back to school, any of those small changes, when, when millions of people are doing them, uh, we're going to notice a huge impact with that. Uh, so we tried to be on the forefront of spreading that awareness and letting people know that there are alternatives to single-use product. Um, what's cool is every product that we sell, whether it's part of an initiative or, uh, you know, some kind of um, select operation that we're doing, everything comes with a one-pound promise. So every product, we basically say that we're going to take out a pound of debris in, in the purchaser's name, so to speak. Um, so that's nice because every pound pulled helps fund the global ocean cleanup operation. It supports the growing movement and uh, ideally will end the world's reliance on single-use plastic. Uh, so Tony, can you give us a little bit of the background of who actually founded sure. and uh, what roles they're playing at 4Ocean? Yeah, so Alex and Andrew are both the co-founders of the company. They started in 2017. Uh, they're alumni of FAU and they went to Bali together on a surfing trip. And when they realized how much debris was appearing on the coastline there, uh, they started to talk to some of the locals and the locals are like, look, this, if you cleaned it up, it's gonna be back here again the next day. And they were able to witness that firsthand. And they tried to come up with a way to help the local community and economy there. So they were hearing complaints from the local fishermen that the amount of fish um, were dwindling, that they were coming back with less, that they were having to go further out to get them. And they realized, well, if we can have a sustainable operation where we could still pay these captains and crew, but instead of going out to collect fish, they could go and collect debris, which would then in turn allow the fish to come back and thrive, it seemed like a win-win. And they put that idea in the process to, to practice. And now we have locations in Guatemala and Haiti, and of course, Florida. Um, also, we just recently uh, started out in Hawaii. So now that adds to the Bali locations. And globally, I think to this point, I'm not sure if we've quite announced it yet, but internally we know that we've reached 18 million pounds of debris uh, removed globally since their inception in 2017. And we've been ramping up our efficiency so much so that we're averaging now about six or 700,000 pounds of debris removed per month. And in our first year, that's about what we were able to get. So um, we're doing crazy, crazy numbers, and we, and we don't see an end in sight. So awesome. All right. So let's uh, let's dive in. Um, let's talk about Floritians and what they first started with is not just the cleanup, but also the bracelets. So, Tony, let's talk about, you know, first of all, how are the, br the bracelets made and um, – and what are the different uh, bracelets that you guys have? Sure. So we have tons of bracelets now. Every month there's a new bracelet. They're, they're limited edition for that time. And we try to associate ourselves with a nonprofit or a cause that we believe in to, to help and, and give them back, uh, like a donation or proceeds of that. So the last three months that we have are Hawaiian Coral Relief, uh, Reef, which benefited the Center for Marine Debris Research, was our September bracelet. The whale shark bracelet is for our October, which benefited the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation, um, which we have close ties. And we've worked with the Oceanographic Center here in MSU many, many times. And just let you guys know, they saw a whale shark here in South Florida on Sunday. True. So definitely you're going to want to get a whale shark bracelet, wear it, and hopefully that's a good luck charm to get a whale shark signing while you're diving. I agree. And it seems like they always <laughs> come around right around this time, because I remember it was right around Thanksgiving when we, we were out there and saw the... The wheelchair that was some years ago, but yep. every time it seems to be right around this time. Yep. Um, and then the most recent uh, November partner is the Pelican Harbor Seabird. So we have the Pelican bracelet. So 
um, whatever the respective marketing deal is that we make with each of those uh, um, nonprofits, they benefit from the sale of these bracelets also. So um, not just the uh, movement itself can you latch onto, but if you are a lover of turtles or pelicans or whale sharks, it allows you to kind of dive in more on that specific cause and know that uh, not only is that going to result in a pound of trash being removed from the ocean, but also there's going to be a direct contribution to that respective nonprofit. Um, so while we're not a nonprofit, uh, we 365, uh, you know, 24 seven, we are helping other nonprofits. We don't look at any of the other um, contributors to the cleanup movement as competitors. We're all the same team, same family, and uh, we're, you know, going about these missions together. Do you know if they do like a subscription for these bracelets that you're making sure you're getting one every month? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do. Um, in addition to the subscription, which would be basically automatically every month when the new bracelet comes out, it's just going to show up in your mailbox. In addition to that, we have some uh, special products and limited runs of products. Um, we don't just sell bracelets. We also sell uh, things to help and support the movement. So we have reusable water bottles. We have, yeah, absolutely. Woo! Guys, we're going to have these at 4C starting tomorrow. And uh, we have cleanup kits, so basically like oversized uh, tongs that you could pick up uh, debris without having to bend over so much so that it, you could get more done in a shorter amount of time. Uh, these are one of my favorite products that we've ever come out with. So this is um, actual plastic that was removed from Florida coastlines, and it's inset in plant-based resin, and it's sterling silver. So we're literally taking trash and making it another person's treasure by making jewelry. And the main thing here is not only does it look super cool, but like if you're wearing this, who's not going to ask you what it is or what it means? So the conversation that comes from wearing this is really the ultimate goal because that that conversation and sparking that awareness is is monumental. So, you know, we hope to see a lot of locals, especially getting behind some of these local initiatives, wearing these products and kind of spreading that awareness. Um, and then this will be what one of the lucky winners for tonight's raffle wins. This product is near and dear to my heart. So it's a bracelet, but also the tires that we removed from Osborne we're using, and we'll, we'll touch base on this a little bit more here shortly, but uh, chips of the tires are actually inset in this plant-based resin. So now we are cataloging the history of such a unique and historic cleanup, and people could actually own a part of Osborne Reef forever. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's hard to see the detail on this, but there's actually laser etched a tire tread on the side, on the back. It commemorates where it came from and the historic cleanup itself. Um, so this is just a super cool product. And what it basically also is, is a way to subsidize the operation. Um, so we want to be able to pull these tires out, you know, as much and frequently as possible. And then unfortunately, it costs money to do so. So <laughs> this product in, in itself is actually subsidizing the operations to remove more tires from the ocean, which for us locally is a huge thing. We're all tied to tourism one way or another, either the benefactor of it or we visit down here. And um, removing these tires is a really good way to ensure that our, our reefs are here for our kids and for future generations. Absolutely. And, and if you noticed... Um, the bracelets, when they first started coming out, they didn't have these, but now they have the uh, charms on them. Yes. So I love the charms. if you look at, I'm um, pull up again. If you look at the, the Hawaiian coral reef, the whale shark, pelican, not only do they have the four oceans uh, logo, but they also have the charm like the pelican and uh, Correct. and all these other really cool charms. So this one's hard to see, but this is the newest whale shark bracelet. And it has a whale shark charm on it as well as the four ocean charm. So that's something that they just started to do this year. And um, it's great because otherwise you have to remember what color is for what. So the, <laughs> the fact that it's now on there and on that charm is pretty cool. Yeah. And as to the kind of uniqueness of, of the different and, and how cool is it when maybe you're out diving and you see these animals and you want to, you know, kind of memorable, what's the word I want to say? Memorize, Memor memorabilize. What do I want to say? Mem you memorialize memorialize this dive. Yeah. You, can, you can come into 4C and get the bracelet of the animal. So sure. what's this bracelet here? So this one's for sea turtles. There so you go. No better way to remember the first time you saw a sea turtle on a dive here in Pompano or, or Boca or Riviera Beach than to commemorate it with a bracelet that corresponds to 
the uh, sea creature that you had that experience with. So uh, plenty of variety here at 4C that's available. And, um, you know, every product, like I said, is going to remove a pound, but specifically the Osborne one is going to go help subsidize the removal of these tires. And we're going to dig in a little bit deeper on what that Osborne project looks like here right now. So this is going to show you a little bit better uh, of what the laser etching and the detail that is in this bracelet. Um, so it's 100% recycled chrome rubber from tires that were removed from our crew specifically. So this isn't just random tire. This is tires that our crew pulled from Osborne Reef and then processed internally for this specific purpose. Um, it's plant-based epoxy resin. So some people are um, apprehensive about it being in a resin, but it is plant-based and also um, this is jewelry. So our thought process is this is something that should live on, be passed down, given to someone else. Um, so it is basically the gift that keeps on giving. Um, it's made out of 100% stainless steel bezel. It's tire shaped with that tread detail. So it's super, super unique. Everybody loves it when they see it in person. And the cord itself um, is post-consumer recycled plastic. We're working on being able to make 100% of our products from 100% of our recovered material. But right now, um, there's still some more research and development that needs to happen for all of the um, makeup of these items to be strictly recovered. There's some things that we need to overcome as far as UV degradation and just overall contamination. Some of the things that we find have been in the ocean many, many years. Um, so the process of being able to use 100% recovered material is something that we're working on and uh, we hope to be there one day. Um, you can get them either packaged in a collector's edition tin or on one of the uh, cause cards. And everything that we make is audited and verified by Green Circle. So it's very important to us that we're not making products that are going to be single use again. Um, so we're trying to repurpose the recovered materials and make sure that it lives as long as possible and never am, ends up in a landfill or, or something similar. So that's something that we uh, take to heart when we come up with products. There's a lot of great ideas that people have for products, but ultimately if that product is going to be a single use product or potentially make it where that now recyclable material is no longer able to be recycled because the infrastructure doesn't support it and we're kind of apprehensive to go in, in that direction. So sometimes these great ideas, that's really the roadblock is that we don't want it to be, you know, to become a single use product and end up, you know, potentially in the ocean again. Um, Osborne is something that really touches home for us locally. I mean, any dive that you go on around here, you're going to find tires on it. And that's where they're coming. And we can tell that these tires are coming from Osborne Reef because they have three basically ovals that are made in the tires that they initially put the banding through. So if you see tires, you know, near the Copenhagen or the Tracy or anything in that range, um, you'll know just by looking at it that it's from Osborne Reef. And cool story, how Four Ocean got involved in this. Um, after Irma passed through in 2017, um, Four Ocean got a call from the city of Boca to respond to the shoreline there. Then a bunch of tires had come up on to the shore and they noticed that these ovals were in them. So um, this literally the storm was only a few hours past and we're able to track that. And we understand that those tires traveled that 20 miles over that few hour period that the storm was passing. And it used the first and the second reef as kind of bumpers. Like think about a bowling lane where you have the bumpers up for a kid to play and it's just kind of bouncing back and forth. That's what these tires did. And we know that because those tires have been seen as high as the Carolinas and even as high as the Panhandle on the west coast of Florida. So we know that these tires are actively moving and destroying our coral reef. Um, and one tire, I mean, how do you even quantify how much damage one single tire does? If we know it started at Osborne and that 65 tires were removed on, I think it was September 12th of 2017, so just hours after the storm. 65 tires are 25 miles north and pulled off of the shore, you know, and that's what we can see. So what are these tires doing day to day? Um, just in, you know, like this week, we have five foot, four foot seas on some of these days. Yeah. Is that moving these tires? And is our natural reef now, you know, just being beat up by these tires? So very important that we get them out. And of course, we want the local community to, to get behind this as much as possible. So I have a question for you guys. Have you seen 
the tire is underwater, we want to know, go ahead and put in the comments section, you can write yes, or you can do the emoji thumbs down because we don't like those tires being in there. That's so, right. all right. So let's go ahead. Sure. Next slide. So, I mean, I've been an avid diver in this area for quite a while. I initially got certified back in 2001. Um, for those that know my past, I was uh, in the dive industry as a dive professional for many, many years in this area. And I didn't know, I didn't understand the gravity of Osborne Reef. I knew that there were tires offshore. I knew that they tried to make an artificial reef. Uh, the thought process back then when they did it, Let's kill two birds with one stone. We have a bunch of tires. We needed to do something with them. The science at that time supported that this was a good idea and that reef would be able to grow on it. I mean, it went through many checks and balances to get to the point and to be approved. And, and the science and thought process of that day in the early 70s uh, was that this makes sense and that this was a good idea. Um, so we want to make that clear. It wasn't anything that was done like in the middle of the night or malicious or somebody trying to illegally dump. This was something that um, was approved and permitted and, um, you know, at that time was thought to be a good idea. But the gravity of it is that uh, over 2 million tires were dumped. So we're not talking about a few thousand or, or even a few hundred thousand. We're talking millions of tires were, were dumped uh, back in 1972 as part of Broward Artificial Reef's proposed construction of they were looking to have the longest artificial reef on the planet. Um, and, you know, Broward County thought that this would be a good idea to attract more game fish to the area, which we know is a large driving force for tourism and, and the local boat traffic. And uh, Goodyear Tire got behind it. They provided the equipment. Uh, equipment. It was quite a large undertaking. And, um, you know, they commemorated the kickoff of it by, by dropping a gold-painted tire from the Goodyear Blimp itself right off where Osborne Reef is, which... Uh, for those that don't know, it's just a few miles north of the Port Everglades port. Uh, so just a few miles north, actually a few miles south of the commercial pier. Uh, so right in that uh, that area. And um, uh, two main tires, like I said, were dumped over a 36-acre area of the ocean floor. And they were banded together, basically how you band like a pallet. So it's the like half-inch nylon strip with the metal band. Uh, to hold it together and they thought that the artificial reef would grow over it before anything would happen to that banding and unfortunately it didn't obviously salt water is very corrosive and with the storms that we get through here it uh, broke the tires apart and now instead of having a few hundred tires banded together uh, now they're just random you know individual tires uh, that are able to just move around uh, you know freely um, so Ultimately, the marine life has been successful uh, or has been unsuccessful in latching onto the man-made reef, right? As they broke up, it became even harder. They're constantly moving. So any coral that maybe started to grow is just breaking as they continue to tumble. And, you know, losing over 200 tires and then becoming individual, it's, it's destroyed any marine life that is in that area or that is growing on those tires or in that area. And it's prevented the growth of any new organisms. So we want to make sure that we're removing these tires. Right now, there's kind of a little bit of a countdown. We know that hurricane season is going to end here in two weeks, and it's going to start again, I believe, May 1st. So we're trying to remove as many tires as we can before then. Uh, we feel that this will probably be a couple-year uh, mission that we're on. But that's kind of a countdown that we have in our head, a little bit of a sense of urgency. Obviously, the weather during the winter is rough and tough to deal with, but we're going to try and get out there as much as we can and um, make sure that these, you know, essentially bowling balls are not just thriving out there and, and ruining our reef, um, you know, 24 hours a day. So um, our current operations right now, you know, we're, we're taking this and hitting this hard because we're looking at this as this is in our backyard. And we knew that we had to get involved. And it took years and years and years to bring that up. Perfect. To get the permitting required. So we have seven permits across, uh, I think, four government agencies to be able to do this. And we have just a very small permitted zone. Our zone is 30 acres. It's north of other zones that are permitted. 
Um, for those of you who, who may know, Industrial Divers is a local commercial diving company. They've been removing these tires from Osborne for uh, multiple years now. And, um, you know, the more the merrier. The more people that are removing these tires, the less likely that these tires are, are able to be bowling balls out there. Um, so each of us has our own respective area that we're permitted to pull these tires from. And uh, we're glad to be through that lengthy permitting process and actually start getting to work. Um, for the first time ever, we're taking our cleanups underwater. Previous to this, we've only been in the mangroves, coastlines, and shorelines. Uh, so this is a pretty big deal for us. There's currently four people who are on our dive team. Yeah. I don't hear the audio anymore. Can you guys hear us? So we're going you know, to make sure that you're hearing us loud and clear. It stopped for some reason. Sure. Let's give it a moment. I think it, we, we should probably talk, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, can yeah. you hear us? Oh, Gary says he can hear us. Right, for some Gary. reason, I can't hear us, but hey, my phone just quit. <laughs> Okay, they hear us. Great. Yes. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Tony. Go ahead. No, no worries. I'm glad that they hear us. Um, so our designated area, cleanup uh, area, uh, spans 34 acres just north of the original drop site. And uh, I see somebody mentioned some. Yes. So we're very, very careful to ensure that um, there's no marine life or anything like that. If there's any tires that we see um, significant growth on, um, obviously, we leave that tire, um, and, and we'll get to a point where we're either working with or where we attain uh, the knowledge and permits to be able to do coral relocation. Um, but right now, we're talking with Shelby with 1,000 uh, mermaids, and um, if there were some situation where we got into where there's an abundance of coral that's on tires, again, it's very hard for the coral to thrive on the tire because even if it is, as soon as that tire flips over or moves, it breaks off. But in the event that we do uh, come across, uh, you know, a large grouping of coral, uh, we would mark that area with our GPS and then return uh, with Shelby when she's available. She does have the permits and the knowledge to do that. And we've been in discussions with her. Uh, but at this point, we're doing our best. There's so many tires that we're able to concentrate on the tires that we know, um, you know, do not have any kind of coral growth or anything on them. Um, and that's what working within our permits as well. Um, aquatic life. Um, anything that we have found that's been inside the tires, obviously we give them a, a moment to, to get out of the tire. But to this point, we're finding that the marine life really is not using uh, this environment as an environment to live in or thrive. Uh, so to this point, we haven't had any issues. And I believe somebody asked about the lift bag. So yes, um, we're currently utilizing a specialized lift bag, um, Halcyon. They're a Florida company. And uh, so they sell different size lift bags. I think 80 pounds is the largest that they uh, have available like for recreational divers. They made these custom lift bags for us with a 185 pound capacity. And uh, they sponsored the program. They saw what we were doing. Um, they believe in ocean conservation. And like I said, they're a Florida company. And they called us up and said, hey, how can we help? And uh, they donated 10 of the specialized lift bags to us and also outfitted three diver's kits head to toe, uh, black plate and wings, regulator systems, everything that we would need to be successful and to put our divers in the best, safest gear for these type of operations. Um, and Halcyon is available at all of your 4C locations. Right? That's You're right. Halcyon dealer. Yep. Uh, so if you want to support a company that supports diving and conservation, um, definitely seek out Halcyon. Their quality is second to none. On everything that they make that has an RF weld like this, it comes with a lifetime warranty. So their SMBs, their lift bags. Um, I actually found one on the reef that had been there for some time, and the dump valve no longer worked on it because it had been underwater so long. And I literally took it just like that, put it in the box, mailed it to them, and they mailed me a brand new one. So <laughs> their customer service is like second to none. Nice. And um, they, they support any kind of ocean conservation initiatives and so forth, obviously, that we're close to with like Project Baseline and stuff like that. So check out Project Baseline, check out Halcyon Gear, and you can come to 4C, ask any questions about their gear, and um, you'll be able to get it through them. So thank you very much to Halcyon for putting my guys in the right gear. 
And uh, being in backplate and wings versus like a recreational style BCD was a game changer for them when they're dealing with lift bags and aluminum 40 stage bottles and so forth. So huge shout out to Halcyon uh, for supporting our efforts. If you work for a company and uh, you feel like there's uh, something that you can uh, help us with, we're always open to any kind of sponsorship um, and, and trying to work out a way to streamline that. Obviously right now, the way to subsidize the Osborne is through the purchase of this bracelet, but we're trying to find out a more efficient way um, to offer basically different tiers for sponsorship levels um, where we can join forces with more companies here in South Florida and, and work together to try and remove these tires. Um, obviously, we'd like to scale the operation uh, through the sale and, and through donations and support. And I'm uh, sorry, I guess donations wouldn't be the, the proper term, but, but sponsorships. Um, and we want to be able to scale that up. Currently, we're getting about 50 tires per day. Um, but with as many tires as are under there, we think that we can ramp that up pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and, and we hope to do that here in the near future. So they're asking sure. um, if they found a tire, is there a drop off location that they can bring it to you? You know what? That's cool. And I can tell you, we don't have anything on the books at this point. But if you brought that tire to, to my shop in, in Boca, um, like where we go through and sort and weigh the recovered materials, we would accept that tire. Um, so if you're in the Boca area, we could maybe even, you know, come by and pick that up from you if you were to encounter one of those tires. But at the same time, we want to make sure that anybody who's removing any of these tires, that they're doing it with the proper gear and, and obviously um, with that skill set in mind. Um, so I think you're a dive against debris instructor, mm -hmm. right, through Patty. And so am I. And I know one of the concerns that they have within the dive against debris curriculum is, you know, don't pick up anything with the lift uh, power of your BCD that's over seven pounds. So if you're removing a tire, please use a lift bag, know how to use a lift bag. And, um, you know, that's what I would recommend for any type of debris of that size. I would not recommend just trying to pick up a tire with just the use of your BCD. Um, and, you know, this is kind of an opportunity. If this is something that you feel very passionate about, that you think that you can help, and if you see one while you're diving on the Copenhagen or the reef, then you'd want to make sure that ideally you have the training and the gear to do that. So, you know, get a lift bag, take a, a search and recovery class with 4C so that you, uh, you know, have an opportunity to use a lift bag for the first time with an instructor. Um, SMBs and lift bags, they're, they're great tools. Um, but if you're not well rehearsed in one, you don't want to be using one for the first time by yourself, unassisted lifting a tire. Um, so Patty Search and Recovery and Dive Against Debris, those skills that come from those two courses independently kind of equal the information that you would need to go after debris that's, you know, bigger than just your typical water bottles and, and straws and caps and so forth, monofilament uh, that we typically see on the reef. Um, so by all means. And you have to be careful because when we're talking about lift bags and safety sausages, like, your typical six foot safety sausage is not going to lift this tire. You guys, you could potentially, you know, inflate it underwater and start to lift, but that could potentially pop as you go up, right? Cause we all know as you go up, the air is going to expand exactly. and you don't want to be uh, holding onto it and it, you sink down fast with it or underneath it and it pops in it. It, it hits you. So sure. that's why we don't encourage you guys to do any lifting of these tires without having the training and the proper equipment. Yeah, and, that, and that's what kind of kind of separates a lift bag like this from some of the ones that you see that are out there. So this has a capable uh, dump valve on it. So as the gas inside expands, it obviously could just purge and um, there's no risk of it, you know, popping or anything as it goes. And it's also completely sealed. So you don't have any worry of it hitting the surface, catching a current and then coming down the um, water now flushing the air out of the bottom of like an open bottom lift bag or SMB. And then now since it doesn't have the, the gas still in it, it would come and sink. So you want to use a ideally a closed lift bag. And this one's pretty cool. I love that it has the basically the same inflation as like a VC. Um, but what it, it doesn't have the divot in it, so it won't lock. So once you put the inflation hose on it, it'll never lock onto it. So basically, uh, you allow it to be free, and it'll pull out on its own and, and go to the surface, and you don't have to worry about it. When we shoot these up, there's no line or anything attached to it. 
Um, we're not making it neutral and going to the surface with it. We're literally just blowing the bag and sending it to the surface where we have a surface crew. Um, and obviously the current will also take it off of our divers. So we try to do it in a way where the, diver, the divers can stay at the, at the floor of the ocean and, and get as much work as they can done in that short uh, period of time. Uh, so they can get as much done as they can instead of bringing them up and down. And, and, and you know, obviously for decompression safeness and safety, we want them to just stay down and, and not do a multi-profile dive. So we've got it pretty dialed in um, with the use of these lift bags. So um, someone has a question here yeah. of how do we ensure that the stuff that we're bringing up doesn't get dumped right back into the ocean? So like, explain that more. What do you mean by that? Yeah. So, because <laughs> they said they believe it happens in some countries. So, yeah, I mean, the truth be told, there are some countries that literally do not have a waste management infrastructure right. at all. So they either have to burn the garbage or they dump it into the ocean. And there's plenty of videos, unfortunately, online where you could see trucks that just pull right up to the, the edge of the water and dump, you know, right into the ocean. So uh, luckily, we do have a nice infrastructure here and a nice waste management system here. But even that is flawed. I mean, people throw things away that then blow out of the garbage can or, you know, whatever. But anything that ends up on land here is going to just go into a storm drain and end up in the ocean in, you know, probably a day's time, unfortunately, especially with as much rain as we sometimes get. Um, I thought I also saw a question about what do we do with the tires? And that's an excellent question. Okay. So... Currently, there's a couple of things that we're doing with the tires. Uh, we're processing them internally and obviously making this jewelry with a portion of it. Um, we've also sent out a lot of tires to different companies to try and do research. Number one, we needed to understand what is the composition of these tires. The tires that are made today are made completely different than the tires that were made late 60s, early 70s. Almost every tire that we pull, one side of them is a white wall tire. Um, so that's interesting to see because like, you don't even see white wall tires really that much no. in these days. Um, but we also wanted to know like, what is the makeup? Are these made with things that now are known carcinogens and so forth? And what we found is uh, they do believe that these tires do leach into the ocean. Oh. Um, but um, I don't know if this is good news, but it's already done. So there's nothing, that's not a current uh, worry they're not they're no longer leaching because they've already leached everything that was in them into the ocean so that is done right now the only physical threat is is the destruction that they would cause from being in contact but initially yes there was stuff that was probably in the tires that leached so we wanted to know as we're working with these tires what are they made of so some were sent to r&d and then whatever isn't able to be used or sent for r&d purposes um, we take to swa so we've partnered with solid waste authority in palm beach and they have one of the most elaborate and technolo technologically advanced, technologically? Technology. We're, we're like not doing yeah. good on our words we're today. Adding <laughs> syllables. So it's one of the most advanced facilities on the planet. People from out of country come and, and tour their facility. So it's basically a waste energy facility. Uh, we want to make sure, obviously, that none of this is ever going to be landfill bound. Nothing that we touch ever is landfill bound. Um, but they're powering about 60,000 homes and businesses in the Boca Raton area. And we're constantly working with different companies to find a better outlet, whether that be, you know, maybe it's a different product down the road. Maybe it's a tire again. Maybe it's a, a flip-flop or the mulch that's under parking or, um, you know, okay. kids' playgrounds yeah. and so forth. So what we want to do, though, again, we want to find a way to make something with it that's going to be more sustainable than that. Because... Even if you made another tire with it, now now that tire at some point is going to have to be disposed of. So we have feelers out there with a bunch of different companies, and we're waiting to basically find the most eco-friendly and responsible outlet for these tires. Um, but right now, with anything excess that we have, it's going to SWA for the waste energy program there. Okay, so I know that before COVID, you guys had lots of cleanup events. Um, currently, during COVID, because of... Sure. the you know gathering of large crowds and everything like that um do you guys foresee that you'll be doing these kind of outreach cleanup beach cleanups um in the future absolutely i mean obviously we need to build our team back up and, and our goal here is to build up bigger and stronger than ever before um but you know covid to this point has been a concern and as the cdc recommendations change and um, as COVID isn't such a prevalent factor in, in our day-to-day -day lives, 
Um, we absolutely plan on getting the local community fired back up and involved in, in local cleanups. So stay tuned for that. Um, we're constantly updating our website. And, um, you know, I imagine with as close as we've been working, I mean, we get all of our fills here at, at 4C and uh, there is probably some, some work that we'll, we'll do here shortly. And, and we're basically gonna use 4C here locally as like our mission hub. So everything that we do comes through here. Any Halcyon gear that we get will come through, um, you know, 4C. And like I said, we've been getting all of our fills and everything through, through the 4C locations here. So you'll be able to probably hear that from Nicole. It'll be on their events tab. I, I'm more than certain that they'll be participating in whatever our next, you know, local community cleanup is. So stay tuned for that. And hopefully that is, uh, you know, sooner than later. I think the beginning of, of 22 is where we really start to try and, hit, you know, hit the ground running and get the community involved with them. Yeah. Um, and then just, Tony, I don't know how much you know, because you're usually on the Osborne Reef crew, but sure. um, how much in the other aspects of cleanups is four oceans involved are you guys in our intercoastals um are you on our beaches cleaning up right now where's uh, is there other teams besides the osborne reef here in florida sure so yeah we have our operation osborne which is really the same team we have our boca contract so we're constantly cleaning up the boca waterways we used to clean up uh fort lauderdale for many many years it was all pro bono we, we completely subsidized those operations uh, internally and um then there was a contract, you know, a request for proposal. Unfortunately, we, we did not win that. So there's uh, currently a different third party that's cleaning up the Fort Lauderdale waterways. But that contract, I believe, ends in about a year or so. So, of course, we're going to go strong for that. And, uh, you know, that's a, another way that the local community could get involved because, um, you know, the commissioners and, and the city officials, they want to hear from, from you. So for those of you who live in the Pompano area, for Lauderdale area that we're that grew accustomed to seeing our crew out there and, and aren't seeing us as, as often, you know, by all means, uh, reach out to your, um, you know, your local board members, your council members, your city officials, and let them know that, that you miss us out there. I mean, I, I actually got calls from from somebody just the other day from Sands Harbor. We used to frequent Sands Harbor. We don't currently, um, and, and we would love to. So, um, you know, we want to partner with these local municipalities and if there are contracts that, that, that are out there, obviously we want, you know, we want an opportunity to, to, to win those opportunities. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tony. Absolutely. Appreciate it. All this great information about what you guys are doing here locally and globally for our oceans. And uh, I just want to go ahead and uh, check out some of our, our inventory. So let's see. This is the unboxing. The, you know, the kids love yes. these videos. So what do we got in here? Oh. Ooh. All right, we've got the Hawksbill sea turtle. Yes. So there's a sea turtle. This is the green. And then the Hawksbill sea turtle green is like an aqua. And then what do we got here? Dolphins. Who doesn't love dolphins? Ooh, dolphins. Love it. Okay. And this is, oh, this is the whale shark. It's got like a pink color. Okay. We have shark. Ooh, shark. Is that like a gray? It's like a, almost like a black. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. What else we got? Of course, the signature. This is how it started. So this is like the OG bracelet. This is our signature four ocean blue bracelet. And listen, the beaded style isn't for everybody, and we understand that. If you look at our website, we've actually just come out with a couple different styles that were just introduced this week. And my favorite are the ones that are just braided. Um, so we have these. These come in different sizes, though. So you'll get these in like small, medium, large where the ones with the beaded are adjustable. And so like I have a six year old son, let me give him a shout out, Michael and my daughters, Bryn, Madison and Paige. These will fit a six year old by just cinching down and then they'll fit somebody with a, a very large uh, wrist as well. So uh, the versatility there, they make you know great gifts because you know it's fit, it's one size all. If you get the ones that are just, the Osborne one is adjustable, but most of the braided ones, you have to buy them uh, for sizing and I noticed like small is really just for youth and so forth. Um, but they're coming out with different styles because we understand, um, you know, people want to have some uh, versatility in, in what they wear and, and so forth. And a lot of people buy them because they like the color. A lot of people buy them because they like, you know, the particular animal or cause that it's associated with. 
And I, I'd say most of the people are probably a mixture of the two. Um, but we got something for everybody. And if you go on the website, you'll also notice we have products that are completely unrelated to bracelets. So we have apparel. Um, one of my favorite, uh, we just came out with the, the Blackout collection. So uh, obviously, Four Ocean Blue is important to us in our branding, but we recognize that not everybody wants to wear such a bright blue. So we've just come out with hoodies and apparel, all with organic cotton. Uh, so it's all sustainable materials. And my favorite uh, product actually is our face mask frame. Hopefully we don't have to wear the uh, mask much longer. But while we are, um, we sell a frame. It's made out of post-consumer recycled uh, material. And it basically just keeps that mask off of your face um, by just having a subtle like skeleton frame. And um, I think we sell them in a three pack or a four pack. And they're great. I actually went to Hawaii to start the operation there. It was like a 10 hour flight. And I don't know how I would have gotten through it. You had to have your mask on the entire time mm. without that frame because it keeps it out of your mouth, keeps it off your lips. So if you wear makeup or lip balm or anything like that, or even some kind of some kind of sun protection, it keeps it off your lips and it just makes it where your glasses don't fog and so forth. So check out our website. There's tons of different products. Um, and also, if you're not seeing a product that they have on the website in the stores at 4C, tell the guys here or the absolutely. guys and gals here. We can put an order in and we can start carrying these things. We need to know what you guys want um, since we're going to re start restocking these products. So. Yeah, we'll just deliver them to you. So obviously we're not trying to ship anything. We want to keep our carbon footprint down. So when we come in to get gas fills from you for Osborne, mm -hmm. we'll just you know bring in whatever it is that your customers are asking for and make sure that you stay nice and stock. Mm -hmm. This is the time. I mean, it's holiday season. Absolutely. It's super unique. And I can't think of a better, excuse me, a better way to spread awareness you know, if you give this to somebody uh, who's not, you know, necessarily in the know about Four Ocean, um, it tells them about us. When you open these, it tells you specifically about the cause inside the packaging. So it's as eco-friendly packaging as we can. And when you open this up, it basically opens up and tells you a story about that cause. Um, so pretty cool, pretty cool gift. Great stocking stuffers. And, um, you know, a lot of these pertain to some very local initiatives that are right here in our backyard. That's so awesome. All right, guys. So are you excited? You want to see who's going to be the winner hey, for the winner? tonight's Osborne Reef? All right. First, let me go ahead and bring in. This is our um, website. So right now, like I said, it's our Give Thanks to Our Oceans Month. So go to our website and take a look at some of the things that we have um, on our website that you can purchase. Or you can also learn some more things about marine debris. Um, and how 4C is trying to get you guys to use more eco-friendly items. Take a class with us. Um, we've got tons of eco-friendly classes. So uh, go ahead and make sure that you check out that website at www.force-e.com. And let's go ahead and I've got everyone's name loaded to our random name picker. Let's see who our winner is. Da -da 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 let's see what we got. Winner is... Kathleen Simmons, Yay. Kathleen, are you on the Facebook Live? Give us a woo, hands in the air emoji. Nice, All right, Kathleen. we'll email Very you cool. and let you know where you can pick this bracelet up um, at one of our stores. And uh, guys, thank you all for listening. Um, obviously, we uh, you know love that you guys want to learn more about. Oh, we got them all. Oh, we did? Yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> we obviously love that you guys want to learn more about how to help protect our oceans and make sure that they still are going to be pristine so we can continue diving in them and seeing all the cool critters that live in the ocean. So thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. And thank you, Four Oceans, for all that you're doing. And we will see you guys soon. See ya.